What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the past week. I just got home from Pro Line by the Fire. It was an epic event, but I am exhausted. But the scale news waits for nobody. So if you enjoy the scale news update, hit the like button. Let's jump into this week's stories. First for this week, shown off at Proline by the Fire is the new element Night Runner version. Now this is a new version of the Night Runner body. It shares a lot of the same proportions and dimensions overall, but with some modifications now, including fenders that are bulged out to carry the larger tires, even though they're only a 4.19, that's still larger than what the original came with. And it's got uh, some changes to the hood with a hood scoop. The rear bed is cut out and it's got a spare tire that goes back there with a little bit of cage work. You'll also see some molded details like the light bar on there as well. Now this is a solid axle and it's got a DeMello off-road front bumper, which this truck is a version of the full-size DeMello off-road Toyota. So solid axle is appropriate because he fixed the full size one by getting rid of the independent suspension and element did the same, got rid of the independent, went with the much superior solid axle. There's a handful of other changes, nothing all that crazy or interesting, except the fact that now they are going with a two in one, but not the two in one that you'd like to see. Instead, it's the two in one that's the receiver ESC combo. We've seen that become a thing with multiple manufacturers. Uh, it's super common in like the, the cheaper like 124 scale world, but we've seen it in one tenth as well. And they've gone to that on this one. Previously they were running surpass ESCs and now this is a fly sky unit. So something to note, it is a difference from the previous elements that you've seen up to this point. You'll find this available for pre-order now. Then we had another new Toyota, this one from FMS, and this is the LC80 Toyota Land Cruiser. This is what they're calling the FCX18. They had put out the teasers of this, talking about the new 118th scale that they had coming out. And then they released this one, and it's basically just the FCX24 with a different body on it. Now, the, there are some differences with the chassis. It's got an aluminum chassis on there, and the wheelbase is just ever so slightly longer than the 124 scale. Not enough that this would be something that you would really want to call a 118th scale, like a new platform. This is the FCX 18 versus the FCX 24. It's like it's a different platform, even though it shares the same axles with the portals and pretty much everything underneath. Uh, it does have oil filled shocks. The body is a nicely molded hard body with that LC 80 style. If you're a Toyota fan specifically of that body, you're going to like it because it's done well. The body is not like a quick detach or anything like that. It's actually held in place with hardware. So if you want to work on it, you're going to have to remove the body with a handful of screws. The truck is a mix of hex head and Phillips head hardware. So you'll need both sets of tools in multiple sizes to be able to you know, maintain this thing. But beyond the weirdness of them changing up naming conventions for something that's barely different, it looks like a pretty decent release. And then Red Cat had a number of releases done at ProLine by the Fire. The biggest release of the week and the most interesting one at ProLine by the Fire was the 1953 Cab Over Hauler that Red Cat released. This truck is seriously impressive. It definitely stole the show for ProLine. The Cab Over style, the old school body, and the you know ramp truck style bed looks fantastic. Out of the box, it's an RTR as you would expect, and it doesn't have any of like the low rider features that Red Cat has on other vehicles, but it's ready for them. You'll basically be able to lay frame on this hauler if you add the servos for it. Super simple, they're in there, everything's built for it already, it's just locked out. So you add a couple of servos, and all of a sudden you've got a hauler that can just lay flat on the ground. Super sick. It's a big, big truck combo as you would expect for it to be able to haul something on the bed it's gonna have to be big and the body the detail on it the paint that's done on it is all just done really well it looks fantastic i think you'd spend a ton of time really going over it at the show but getting a chance to look at it in person it was as impressive or more impressive than the photo show the wheelbase on this thing is 535 millimeters overall length is 36 inches. <laughs> it's a big hauler. We had the release of the Traxxas hauler last year with the 6x6. This one, not a 4x4, 
it's a two wheel drive hauler. The front axle is just a beam axle with the steering servo mounted onto that front beam. Two wheel drive only though. So take that into consideration when you're thinking about the terrain that you're going to be using this on. This is not meant to go side by side with the Traxxas hauler. It's a very different style, very different terrain based, but nonetheless, pretty sick. And with the cab over, they also officially released the trailer. We talked about the trailer some time ago as they kind of did a sneak peek of it on their live shows that they do, but they officially released it, goes right behind that hauler. It's a big trailer as well. I think it's something like 30 inches long itself, but it's got kind of an interesting high side style. I, there's probably trailers like it. I just don't a hundred percent know exactly where that style came from, but the ramps store in the back, you can pull them out, put them on there. It's got a steel ladder frame chassis as well. It's made to hold some heavy rigs. I think it said upwards of 20 pounds on that trailer, which that's significant. It's got leaf springs with the axles attached to one set of leafs. And they've got a little bit of, uh, I don't think it's called walking beam, but it's something along those, uh, along those lines for the articulation between the two axles. Either way, a nice companion to that cab over an ex an excellent job. And lastly, Red Cat used that cab over and that trailer to display the new Ascent low center gravity crawlers. These use a lot of the components that you've seen from Red Cat previously, but put into a package that's more focused to like the LCG or cheater truck style. Flat rail, aluminum chassis, the portal axles that you saw on like the Gen 9, which were just an updated version of the Gen 8s. It's got a divorce transfer case and forward motor mount, which I believe uses similar parts to what, again, you've seen in trucks like the Gen 8. I haven't gone through and confirmed what parts are shared, but that does note that the transfer case has got a quick change underdrive setup available. So I believe that it's got some sort of gear set that you could modify in there to give you the overdrive or underdrive style. It does have a more powerful stock style servo at a 35 kilogram rating. And the body is kind of a hinged design. It's got a clip style in the front with a couple of pins in the rear, but there's two body styles that you can choose from. And the price changes depending on which one you choose. The single piece body, which is cab and bed in one combo, not necessarily pinched, but fairly high clearance. That one's gonna retail for 289 RTR. Or you can go for the second option, which is a two piece, which has got a pinched and dovetailed design and a cab only with a bed bolted on. So if you wanted to remove the bed, change up the style, add your own custom style rear bed, you could do that. And that one is going to be 10 bucks more. So 299 for that version. Going after price point for sure. RTR crowd, if you're looking for that, you know, LCG style truck, this is trying to give you an option for that right out of the box. The rest, of the, the rest of the specs on the truck seem pretty standard with a 312 millimeter wheelbase, which you know, mo normally you call it 313. I imagine it's all just right in there. Oil filled shocks does come with a four channel radio, although you won't be using the extra channels at this point, at least just the standard steering and throttle. Uh, 550 can motor and you know, the rest is pretty standard fare. These are currently listed as pre-order and I believe that they're going to be available sometime in mid October. This Wednesday, don't forget to check in on the next episode of the Four Dice Budget Build with Matt from Scale Builders Guild and myself, where we're taking the Vanquish Four Dice and upgrading it with an amount to be determined by the wheel of Four Dice. We spin a wheel live every Wednesday to determine the amount of money that we either get or don't get to spend on the build. This will be week three of eight. So check in on that see what we got accomplished this week. Next, Kyosho had a release last week that was fairly interesting. This is the Toyota Tacoma RTR and great scaled out style Tacoma body, but it's on a basher chassis. And while we don't cover most of the bashers as there was some other bash releases this week, but this one had such a scale body on top that I figured I'd cover it. Kyosho continues to do a fantastic job on their super scale bodies and they put this one on a, a very standard 3S capable independent suspension all the way around kind of tub style chassis basher. One nice thing is, is that it does have the stealth body mount. So you don't have body pins sticking through the top, which is cool to see. 
on the Basher one. I really wish they would incorporate that onto all of the Phaser line where their super scale on-road cars are, but they're making progress. They're paying attention, which likely means we'll see these things being incorporated throughout other areas here soon. It comes in two colors. It's got a bunch of molded details on the body as well. So things that you'll easily tear up while bashing, I assume. But the other thing is that it uses standard short course style tires and sizing overall, I believe is similar, although narrower than a standard short course. So if you have the desire for a basher, but you just really, really care about how it looks, this might be a good option for you. Also new from Kyosho, the 1971 Benz 300 SEL. This is just a fantastic looking model, a great body. It's kind of out of nowhere. It's you know not one that you normally expect to see in RC, but it just looks so good. However, it does of course still have the body posts through the hood and the trunk, like all of the rest of the phasers. Just like Tamiya, they're taking and putting really good looking bodies on the same platform over and over. Although arguably the phaser platform is better than just about any of the Tamiya platforms. So <laughs> if you're interested in the performance of the platform at all, the phaser is not bad in the slightest. This one's gonna be available in November. J Concepts released a new 1.9 tire. This is the Megalithic. J Concepts also noted a number of details that they put into the tread with like some of the small logos, all to commemorate the 20th anniversary of J Concepts. So this is likely going to be targeted towards people that really liked the ruptures or that super comp style, less on the scale focus area of the tires. Their ruptures obviously have been super popular in that crowd. This one could possibly be, you don't know until you try it, but J Concepts compounds also seem to do pretty well. So if you like the super aggressive, crazy styling of this, and you think maybe it'll do well in your terrain, maybe it's worth picking up. This week, J Concepts also posted up their aluminum 1.9 hazard wheel set with the brass weights that you can add as well. The, the brass weights are put on in four sections around the outer clamp ring. I'm not sure if you can just add two at a time or you always have to add all four. Either way, you can pick up this aluminum set of wheels with the molded clamp ring and those brass weights. It doesn't have an adjustable hub. The hub is machined in the back, so the offset that it comes with is the offset that you get. It does come with a center cap that you can bolt on. I believe that that is molded though. So you will see a difference in the blast finish that they have on the outside versus that molded center cap. Either way, if you like that old school style, these are pretty cool. And then something that's not old school, these are the RC Full Drive 2.6 inch Black Rhino Blaster Forged Wheels. I think that forged is just a part of the name. I highly doubt that these are forged in any way, but uh, 2.6, I believe that this is focused towards like the monster truck scene. I think they showed it with some of the Genus tires mounted onto one of their monster trucks, but I think you could probably also get away with stretching some like 1.9s on it for the bro dozer look maybe. <laughs> probably not the most common use, but I, you know, I could see it. Doesn't sound like there's anything wrong with that, but maybe a little bit. If you're looking for some fancy deep dish 2.6 inch wheels, we've got a new option. Last week I asked you guys what your preferred wheelbase was, just to see if the consensus had changed and if people were trying a lot more wheelbases rather than just 12.3 or 12.5. People were getting into the real short wheelbase more and more, or some of the longer wheelbases even, which I tend to like at times as well. But for this week, I wanted to ask, Proline by the Fire just ending, a great event. One of the ones that I look forward to the most all year. But what I wanted to put out to you guys is, what have you looked forward to most in RC? Whether it's an event or the first drive, the first purchase of an RC, the purchase of your dream RC or a certain type of part, tool, accomplishment, you know, your first win, whatever it is. What have you looked forward to most? Whether you've achieved it already, you reminisce on it or something that you still have, you know, out there that you hope to, you know, get to experience whatever it may be. Be interested to hear where your guys' comments on these go. Comments on these videos is my favorite part of the Scanlies update. Drop yours below. With that, 
Thanks for watching the Scale News Update. If you enjoy it, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. I'm going to get this finished and get some rest. It was a fantastic but long, tiring weekend. I'm glad to be home. See you guys soon. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.